Was Assassin's Creed Syndicate really that bad? This review is a little different than most I've done because I've never played this game before. Six years ago, Syndicate became the first Assassin's Creed game I didn't buy. I rented it from movie trading company and quit after sequence three. Like a lot of people, I sort of gave up on the series after Unity. But now in 2021, things are different. I've replayed almost every game in the series. And since I ended up loving Unity, it made all the sense in the world to give Syndicate another shot. And while Unity is my favorite of these two, Syndicate deserves a lot more respect than it gets. I just think it's a genuinely fun video game that if you're not choosing to get hung up on specific things based on principle, then you're gonna have a good time. So what's different? While well, Ubisoft definitely has other far more important problems now that need to be addressed, 2014 was terrible for this company. Unity launched with bugs and Watch Dogs looked much better at E3 than it did on launch. These controversies wrecked the reputation of this company for years. So when Syndicate came out in 2015, people still had a bad taste in their mouth. But Ubisoft's controversies aren't the reason I didn't give Syndicate a chance. I just rejected this game entirely. I did not like Eevee or Jacob. I did not like the rope launcher, and I definitely did not like the comedic Sherlock Holmes vibe that this game went for. The Rooks? The Blighters? What is this? Peaky Blinders? You're telling me this guy? This guy right here? This is the villain? There's no way that this guy wearing a top hat is an assassin. You just can't convince me. I decided that Syndicate was terrible because of how many hard lefts it takes as an Assassin's Creed game. And I went on believing that for years. Again, without having actually played it. The thing is, I was wrong. Not just because it wasn't fair to say the game is bad without having played it. Because for how much I love the ideal version of the assassin fantasy, Syndicate has a lot more assassin DNA than I expected and more than it gets credit for. Hell, it even captures some of the campiness of the Ezio games, which surprised me. But like Odyssey did a few years later, Syndicate takes a lot of liberties with the Assassin's Creed identity. If Black Flag took the first baby steps in the evolution of the series towards, you know, era and character focused games, Syndicate took the first leap and it dives headfirst into an era where the Creed and the Brotherhood just don't matter as much. That's not me being a dirty, stinking purist. <laughs> that's the truth. And that's what the 2015 version of me was not ready to accept. Here in 2021, though, that's a lot easier to accept because we've seen it for several games now. Origins rewrote the origin story for the Creed with the Hidden Ones. Odyssey predates the Hidden Ones even existing. And Valhalla tiptoes around the Creed as much as possible. Valhalla taught me that if I'm looking for a Creed experience from these games now, Odds are I'm going to be disappointed. But Origins, Odyssey, and now Syndicate have proven to me that I don't need the prototypical Creed experience to enjoy these games. And while I definitely wish they did have it, it's not so much of a turnoff that I'm not able to, you know, enjoy myself. But again, that's not telling the whole story for Syndicate. It's actually selling it short because this is the last old formula Assassin's Creed game to me. While it's not a true Creed experience in some ways, it very much is in others. I mean, you've got lethal hidden blades, black box assassination missions, functional stealth. This is a true city game experience. I was able to appreciate the ways it reminded me of what these games used to be, while also not killing it for doing its own thing. By now we've learned that's what Ubisoft Quebec does. They inject new ideas into this franchise and the games they've made so far, whether you love them or hate them, they have their own DNA. You know you're playing a Quebec Assassin's Creed game when it's polished and functional, simple yet refined, and it has this happy-go-lucky tone. And then the biggest thing of all, these games take liberties with the Assassin's Creed identity, and those can absolutely be red flag turnoffs. And here in 2021, I looked for a fun video game, and that's what I found. Even though I am a card-carrying purist, I was able to just have a good time with this one, instead of listing out every single way it goes against my list of Assassin's Creed demands. So no, it 
wasn't really that bad. I actually think it's pretty good. Jacob and Evie Fry are twin assassins, but if you quizzed either one of them on the Creed, I'm not quite sure they'd pass. If not for one of them chasing a piece of Eden, if not for the hidden blades, hoods, and occasional outfits with the symbol on it, you might not even know that they are assassins. They fight Templars, they're mostly decent people, mostly, but Syndicate has almost none of the connective thread to the Creed or the Brotherhood that I expected, at least far less than Unity had. I like Henry Green, but he almost exists to remind me that Evie and Jacob are not just common vigilantes. At the very start, you see Evie and Jacob going on a legit assassin mission. They're working with George, they uncover some real Templar bad stuff, and decide they need to go to London to stop it. Instead of asking for permission, they leave Crawley and just go for it. Almost every assassin is a rebel in some way, so that lines up nicely. When I first got to London and met Henry Green, I also expected to meet some sort of like organized assassin presence. And there is some of that, but not outside of a few contexts that you meet over the course of the game. We learn that London has been ruled by the Templars for generations, and I don't know, I, I thought I'd meet the council. I thought I'd see the London Bureau. These are not things everyone cares about, but after the way Unity bled for the assassin fantasy, seeing that part of these games limited only to mentions and conversations or callbacks to previous games, it was disappointing to me. There's a point when I realized this game is just assuming that I know that I'm playing as assassins, and I just prefer when the game shows me that I am an assassin as much as possible. That said, the dynamic between the Fry twins is genuinely compelling. The way they clash and disagree on how to achieve their goals is something that did keep my attention. And while I found myself loving Evie's personality and her pursuit for the Shroud, I just did not connect with Jacob at all. More often than not, he comes off like the anchor arms guy from SpongeBob. Now I'm a jerk and everybody loves me. I would have paid to see Evie rip off this top hat and just, yeah, toss it into the Timps. It felt like each of their missions was meant to show me that although their methods are different, they both have good intentions. But Jacob's side of that just didn't convince me. It felt like he was more interested in building up a gang or flirting with every single older woman that he met. I was waiting for Jacob's redeemable moment, and it does come when he saves kids from a burning building, but that's like 15 hours in, and also, who the hell doesn't save kids from a fire? Unless you're George Costanza, that's like the bare minimum of decentness, and it didn't outweigh all of the other asshole things that Jacob does. Now, there is one thing I do like about Jacob. It's that he reminds me of Ezio. He has these ridiculous moments, these missions, where he shoots a big Gatling gun or blows up a train. And he's always got this smile on his face, and yeah, he's just having a good time. When it works, it fits just the right level of camp for me to enjoy these moments for what they are ridiculous and fun. That's what Leonardo's machines did for me in the Ezio games, and those are some of the most memorable missions across the series for me, so I recognized that and I appreciated it. I didn't hate Jacob so much that it ruined the story for me. And even though there's no tangible assassin presence, this narrative is very Assassin's Creed. You meet allies with quirky personalities, you take out a bunch of Templar lieutenants in black box assassination missions, which are pretty great by the way, you clear out districts of Templar presence, and you kill the big bad Templar at the end. We all know the drill and it's no different here. What elevates this story for me though is the presentation. When I said this is the last old school AC game, presentation is a big part of that. I'm talking fully scripted characters with great animation in traditional cutscenes. Maybe I'm just a boomer, you know, like I'm an old soul, but this is what I prefer. I connect with the narrative, the plot points, and the characters much more when I'm delivered a story, beat for beat. Quebec rarely misses with its characters. Charles Darwin, Mrs. Disraeli, Pearl Attaway, Sergeant Aberline, Alexander Graham Bell. Each of these and more are colorful characters who command the screen to the point that it actually makes the twins fade into the background. Even the Templar targets were interesting. If you pay attention to these corridor confessions, it's really impressive, and I don't think that Quebec gets enough credit for its writing. And 
This also reminded me of how much I miss these in Assassin's Creed Unity. I make fun of Crawford Steric because look at this guy, how can you not? But he is intimidating. He has a presence about him that does inspire fear. But it's a shame that you have to wait a few hours before you ever see him open his mouth. And then he sort of chimes in after each sequence, delivering like a fireside chat monologue from the comfort of his office. I just think he was misused in this game. Most open world games don't do a great job of pacing out the villains. They'll appear in the beginning and then at the end, you just never see them enough and Syndicate is no different. There's also no personal connection between Steric and the twins. They're only enemies insofar as being on the opposite sides of a war and that could have been enough if the Fries were convincing assassins, but they just weren't for me. So their motivation to take down Steric feels very surface level. It wasn't convincing. Throughout the story, they mention how their dad was an assassin and you know, Evie has that connection with him and really wants to be like her father. So I was expecting some sort of reveal that Steric killed their dad or had some kind of hand in his death, but that never came. Not every AC story needs to be about revenge. A lot of them are, and that doesn't have to be a rule. But if I don't believe these two are doing what they're doing for the assassin cause, then yeah, maybe a revenge plot might have been better for this game. But I do realize we're taking kind of a magnifying glass to this plot. I think on the surface, it's fine. It's, you know, a pretty much what you expect from an Assassin's Creed story. I think it's also fair to call out Evie and Jacob for not evolving that much. It's funny because most AC games are origin stories, right? It's about how these characters become assassins rather than what they're doing when they are one. It's about learning the true meaning behind nothing is true, everything is permitted. It's about making mistakes, learning from those, and growing. That's not the case for the Fries because they're already assassins. So while you'd think that we don't need an evolution here, these two already understand it, right? Wrong! I feel like they don't get it. Well, Jacob definitely doesn't, but I'm not convinced Evie does either. There is a character arc here. Evie and Jacob disagree on how to take down Steric and actually decide to part ways before making up in the end. That's the emotional attachment I think I was supposed to have, but it didn't quite grab me. With great power comes great responsibility, and being an assassin should come with responsibility, and... I don't know, these two, I'm not convinced that they have any. But again, I wanna hammer home that I don't hate this story. In fact, if you don't really peel back the layers like we're doing in this review, it comes off like an action-packed B-movie. There's so many fun set pieces and moments that did grab me. The final mission stood out as particularly special. I mean, that dance scene with Steric and just sort of the drama of it all <laughs> is awesome. And then the Pearl Attaway reveal was not something I was expecting. So when it happened, you know, that grabbed my attention. Even if this isn't my ideal Assassin's Creed story and it doesn't quite support the Assassin fantasy that I look for, I think there's plenty to enjoy moment for moment. I mean, they even brought Desmond back. Shh, Desmond. Okay, let's get serious for a moment. I didn't fully understand the EV situation because I hadn't played Syndicate before. But after a certain point, EV kind of takes a back seat. It's towards the back end of the sequences of the main story and Jacob sort of takes over. And that just perfectly illustrated to me what happened uh, behind the scenes. I mean, we know more from reports, but EV absolutely deserved more attention in this game. I just think she's the better character and it really sucked to see her kind of sidelined after a certain point. It's a shame that Ubisoft let this happen moving forward with Origins and Aya. Uh, so it's definitely like a black stain, it's a black mark on these games for me. Let's take a moment to look at this modern day. Man, it's basically the same as Unity, but add Sean and Rebecca and subtract the co-op and online elements. You get interrupted every few sequences with a small cutscene showing you what the modern day assassins are up to. And yeah, this doesn't work for me on any level. This is about as satisfying as hopping out of the Animus with Layla in Valhalla. The real kick in the nuts is when you find the shroud, once again, you get to watch Sean and Rebecca and this other assassin fail to retreat it. It's kind of like this meme here in video game form. If you guys don't already know, I'm all or nothing on the modern day. Either fully commit to this stuff or don't do it at all because 
This in-between sort of routine does not work. Another thing Unity did that I appreciated was have Bishop narrate over the simulation, just like Sean, Rebecca, and Lucy used to do. I was hoping Quebec would carry that forward, but they didn't. Of course, we all know how the modern day ends, at least this plot thread. This is the last game where Juno and the instruments are really the focus. And it's just a bit sad to see this and know how it ends. If there's one thing I could go back and talk more about in these 2021 AC reviews, it would be setting. When and where these games take place is so important to each Assassin's Creed that it's almost the single most defining element. When people casually talk about these games, they label them by the setting. Syndicate is the one set in Victorian London during the Industrial Revolution. Some settings are just going to be more compelling to different people for different reasons. If this setting is something you're into and willing to explore, you're in for a real treat because Ubi Quebec just crushed it. This is an unbelievably dense, meticulously decorated open world that charmed me from start to finish. I don't know what I expected after Paris, but if Unity didn't exist, this might be the most impressive AC world to date. In terms of the city games, I think there's something to be said for the massive new open worlds that we're getting now. Being the most modern mainline AC game to date, I was worried that this era might take away from the historical feeling that I always get from these games. But it really doesn't. Of course you have things like the Rope Launcher, which we'll talk about in a minute, but the billowing smokestacks, the constant chug of boats hauling cargo through the Thames, the horse-drawn carriages and trains. I'm not someone who looks for realism or historical accuracy from these video games, but this feels like such a rich depiction of this period in time. Whosoever controls London controls the world. And I can believe through this brilliant world design that this is the epicenter of the world at this time. If the devil's in the details, then Syndicate is possessed because so much went into convincing me that this place is real. Walk down any street, you can find kids playing soccer, kids selling newspapers, kids working industrial jobs. Child labor, man, that was the hot trend. Couples posing for photos on the sidewalk. Gentlemen of considerable station and import gathered to discuss politics. Train stations packed with people filing in and out. Flames erupting in buildings with fire trucks coming to put them out. Carriages hijacked with policemen hot on the trail. There's an impressive blend of ambient animation going on at any moment in every place that makes this world feel like it has a pulse. Crossing the Thames by carriage, rope launcher, or on foot like, I don't know, Frogger is just one of my favorite things to do in this game. Watching the rain come in and wash over this city, seeing the transition between night and day, it's just special. Running across the rooftops at night with your hood on, it just brings out a certain emotion that I don't think you get from every single Assassin's Creed game. It's awesome. What makes this world even more delightful is the soundtrack. I'd heard great things about the music in this game, but hearing it kick in each time I load in and just explore, it added another special element to this world. It reminded me of all the ambient music I love from the Ezio games. Syndicate has really good open world flow. Sometimes when I'm exploring an open world video game, it feels like pulling teeth. I'm being tugged between the main story and side content, or navigating it just is not interesting to the point that I fast travel everywhere. This game strikes a really nice balance to where there's not too many open worldy things to do, there's actual substance to be found if you're looking for optional content, and it doesn't take eight years to get to each destination. I will say that one time I felt overwhelmed by the conquest activities, but that was after only doing them for a few hours in a row, like exclusively in order to clear a district. So I kind of feel like that's on me. Speaking of, there were times when I wished the district system wasn't so gamified. I don't feel like the clear the map, fight the boss routine aged very well for this game. And it might've even felt a little exhausting in 2015. But I will say that a lot of these activities are saved by the stealth. It's legitimately fun to roll up and then systematically take down an entire platoon of blighters and, yeah, save some children. There's a few times in my notes where I wrote down Grand Theft Auto Victorian London. The sheer number of carriages on the road and the fact that there are actual police in this game, the fact that you can get into chases, 
it just reminded me of GTA. This game can devolve into that sort of chaos where you're driving around, running over pedestrians, bumping into carriages, pulling out your revolver, just shooting cops in broad daylight. I had this realization many times and I was fine with it. This doesn't bother me. I think it's a product of the era, the whole industrial revolution thing. And yeah, it's actually a charming part of the game to me in a very unexpected way. I think it's due to the fact that this might be the most dynamic Assassin's Creed world ever. It does feel like things happen in a very organic way that surprised me every time I saw them. Now we should talk about parkour. To give you some context, I love parkour. I think free running is fundamental to this series identity. And when it's done right, it's one of the most satisfying things about this series. I'm one of those people who thinks Unity's system had style and substance. I love it. So with all of that in mind, Syndicate's parkour feels like you know, my parents put up the bumpers on the bowling lanes at the bowling alley. It's on rails. It's dumbed down. It's simplified. It's streamlined. I can't make any mistakes. I can't learn and I can't express myself through movement. There's no sense of momentum and I get sucked into these vortex animations like a crater passing through the gravitational pull of a planet. Instead of one step forward and two steps back, it's no steps forward and like 27 Olympic gymnast level somersaults back. That's totally dramatic, but man, Movement just sucks compared to what we had before. You might be surprised that none of that has to do with the rope launcher. Before I played, I thought this was a gimmick. This is a goofy Quebec thing that just breaks open world navigation. I think it can do that, absolutely. If you use the rope launcher to replace climbing instead of assisting with it, you can turn off your brain and rob yourself of the magic of climbing in an Assassin's Creed game. The thing is, the way this world is spaced out with the one-to-one -one ratio, it's impossible to traverse this world without it. Unless you want to run on the ground a bunch or use the carriage a bunch and avoid climbing entirely, you just have to use the rope launcher. The buildings are too far apart and you can't cross this city reasonably without touching the ground. And knowing that, there's just no way I'm going to climb up and down and up and down these buildings. So I see the rope launcher as somewhat of a necessary evil because I really do think that the one-to-one -one ratio that Unity and Syndicate have adds this fun factor, this element of realism to these worlds that make them feel grand in scale. Like it's very important. So I kind of made my own balance. I found a rhythm where I use the rope launcher to cross large gaps, but stuck to the old tried and true, you know, climbing most of the time. Not everyone is willing to do that, right? Most gamers probably are just using the rope launcher and hey, that might be fun for people. It's not super fun to me. So I found that balance and I ended up yeah, not like hating the rope launcher like a lot of people. It's actually a pretty cool tool to use for combat. More than a few times, I popped a smoke, killed some dudes, and then ziplined back up to my perch like Batman. And I'm okay with feeling like Batman in the industrial era Assassin's Creed game. It feels kind of appropriate. But yeah, this can absolutely be abused. You just have to find a balance. And my perfect version is a zip line that only works when going down or across buildings. That way you're encouraged to free run for the rest of the time. But again, that also assumes that Quebec decided to keep all of the complexity of parkour that was in Unity. They decided not to. So I just, I don't hate the rope launcher and what it does for this game. It feels necessary to me. Combat in Syndicate is a mixed bag. It's funny after playing Unity because while I love the way Arno dances around like a deadly ballerina, it sort of sucked that there were so many broken animations that broke up the flow of that game. I have a similar love-hate relationship with Syndicate's combat. Because this is a Quebec game, they made sure to polish this combat to where you don't have those broken animations. It's actually pretty clean. In its best moments, it's very reactive. It's kind of like Sherlock Holmes. First, distract target. Counter with cross to left cheek. But they made a creative choice to go for this over-the-top street brawler fighting style where it's basically death by a thousand cuts. The problem for me is 
this combat has no flow, no rhythm. After 20 hours, I still can't predict how many times I'm going to hit a target each time I press X to attack. The same goes with counters. I have no clue what's going to happen, and if I pull off a finisher, a lot of the time, I'm just waiting for Evie or Jacob to just kill the guy, for God's sake. It's all, it's all ju ju just an act. <laughs> Most games with melee combat give you the ability to queue up attacks. That's how combos work. It's kind of like this language that all game developers agree on. This is how it's supposed to feel. I think this game has that, but if it does, I couldn't tell you because again, the attack button gets you anywhere from one to six hits per press. It's insane. After playing Odyssey and even Immortals, this is something I feel like Quebec would have nailed. Their gameplay systems in those games are rock solid. They make sense, they feel reactive, but maybe they learned after Syndicate. It's just not intuitive in this game. Combat it just turns into a button mash fest. It was not for me. That said, I think combat looks pretty damn cool. Aside from death by 5 million blows, the multi-kill finishers are so cool. They remind me of Assassin's Creed 3. They're not quite as mechanically interesting because we don't have unique tool combos like that game, but Quebec clearly spent a lot of time making these look good, and I appreciate that. It reminds me of how people love to slam the older games for counter-kill combat without giving any credit to the animation. There was nothing more satisfying than pulling off this double hidden blade finisher in Assassin's Creed 2 or Brotherhood. Animation, style, it does matter. But the older games had flow too. There was a dance, there was a rhythm to the combat that regardless of how easy it was, it felt satisfying. The difference for me is Syndicate doesn't have that dance. It doesn't have that rhythm. And while the brawler style was a unique idea, I don't think it works. What does work though is stealth. And man, oh man, does it work. I'd heard Syndicate had good stealth, but it's one of those, I'll believe it when I see it kinds of things. Detection in this game just works. I don't get seen when I'm not supposed to be. Enemies don't alert everyone in a five mile radius when I get seen. My hidden blade kills people with one strike and I use throwing knives to headshot enemies. Last known position works like a charm and it's super satisfying. They also added the kidnap ability, which lets you walk around in restricted areas with an enemy. It's goofy, a little unrealistic, but I love how functional it is. It's just another tool in your arsenal. There definitely could have been more tools for stealth, but Ultimately, over a 20 hour you know, playthrough, I was satisfied with this stealth. Stealth was my first option in most missions for both Eevee and Jacob. And again, it reminded me of the old DNA of this franchise. This game truly lets me play stealth first and I love it for that. I was guilty of killing Syndicate for the RPG stuff. Leveling up, spending skill points, buying upgrades, crafting gear, and level gating. Of course, this was before I actually played the game and got to experience these systems over the course of one playthrough. So I was surprised when none of this really bothered me that much. It is a pet peeve of mine to have skill trees where there's no trade-off decisions. You just level up and then spend all the points to get all the skills. Would have been nice to see the origin style tree where you actually have to make decisions, but the tree does provide some gameplay evolution, like unlocking execute, improving stealth, and making guns deadlier for Jacob and knives deadlier for Eevee. The level gating didn't affect me because I did enough side content to always be at the required level or higher. However, when I did stream the game, I did run into the level gating issue. I ignored side content and then missions became too difficult. So that definitely was a real problem. I don't think there's any reason to force players to do what is considered optional content. So I think that part of the game doesn't age very well. Crafting is probably my biggest beef. It was annoying to want to craft a new item, but realize you can't because you don't have the super specific crafting resource you were supposed to get from a chest. I don't know, that's kind of a nitpick, but it did bother me. I wanted to take a moment to talk about tone. This is something I don't think I've covered a ton in these 2021 reviews, but it's something that I care a lot about. After playing both Quebec Assassin's Creed games, I think I get what they aim for with tone. They give us a light, not super complicated plot with stories and characters that try to make you smile. And this works for me in Odyssey. It's a very bright sort of environment. You know, there's some serious stuff going on, but it works there, not so much in Syndicate. 
Assassin's Creed has gone through multiple tone shifts over the years. It started with this gritty heaviness that felt very sci-fi, very brooding. And then it shifted to campy with Ezio. This is over-the-top action hero vibe that felt romantic and chivalrous. Then, as Ezio grew older, the games became more mature. Brotherhood Ezio kicks ass and takes no shit. Revelations feels like the wise old master assassin of the entire series. Then Assassin's Creed 3 adopted the direness of Connor's situation, his rage, his anger. It might be the grittiest game in the series outside of AC1. Then we got the swashbuckling devil may careness of Edward in Black Flag. Next, Unity has this dark but charming stylishness about it. And that brings us to Syndicate. Syndicate does the Robert Downey Jr. Sherlock Holmes thing. Almost every word uttered in this script can't be taken seriously sometimes. It's presented in this sing-songy accent with a jokey slant. It's just laden with five layers of irony. It's like if Aaron Sorkin wrote a dark comedy but failed to understand what makes good dark comedy. You know, there's no hard-hitting punchline at the end. One moment you're watching this guy lobotomize someone, the next you're, yeah, flirting with the prime minister's wife. Something about this whimsical meets horrifyingly brutal mix doesn't work for me. I think they were trying to capture the era, do the accents. They were doing the Sherlock Holmes bit. Robert Downey Jr. is an asshole, but he's got a heart, damn it. Meanwhile, Jacob tries to do this bit and he just fails. These characters in this story, they needed a bit more to pull off this tone, to strike that. and. I think it missed the mark. It just feels like a tonal mismatch in too many places. At the same time, some people may not be bothered by that at all. This might not even be something that's on your mental radar when you're playing this game, but it was something that sort of hung in the back of my mind the entire time. And it was sort of that layer that prevented me from really connecting with this story like I wanted to. So, was Syndicate really that bad? While I spent a decent amount of time complaining in this video, probably like 50-50, it's more that I have certain preferences for this series. Syndicate doesn't do everything that I like, but that doesn't mean that I didn't have fun with it. I think it's absolutely worth a play to experience the final taste of the old formula of Assassin's Creed, but also to take this rock solid stealth for a spin and to exist in this absurdly incredible open world. This open world is so good, that I feel like I'm gonna boot up Syndicate just to run around in it, just to exist. And guys, this game is like six bucks when Ubisoft does one of their huge sales. I mean, if you consider yourself any sort of fan of this series, I just think it's a waste to not experience this one because odds are, I think you're gonna enjoy yourself, especially if you can take five deep breaths and enjoy video games that aren't perfect tense. Before we go, I just want to say that I always get comments on these videos saying, wait, who thought this game was bad? Look, I'm never here to tell you guys how you should think. I'm just sharing what I think. While not everyone is going to agree on games, there is a general consensus if you take a look around. I've spent a decent chunk of time over the last year in several AC communities, and Syndicate is almost always seen as an underdog game in this series. If you watch a lot of YouTube, belong to a couple Discord servers, or spend time in any community, I think you have to go out of your way to not see this. It sold the least that we know of, and it's criticized because Ubisoft Quebec made Odyssey, which is probably the most controversial game in the series. While I know there are plenty of Quebec and Syndicate and Odyssey fans out there, if you set aside your feelings and just take a general temperature on this game, just look around the room. Yeah, I think the vocal community who likes to talk about AC games generally doesn't give Syndicate much credit. That's why I think Syndicate deserves more credit. And if you think Syndicate is a 10 out of 10, then more power to you, man. Tell me why in the comments below and we'll talk about it. The only main game I haven't played yet is Rogue, but to tell you the truth, I by this point think all Assassin's Creed games are eights at the very minimum. As an IP, AC is just compelling to me. For the most part, it has been ever since 2007. That's why I like to talk about it so much. So really, I hope this AC in 2021 series helps to dispel the myth, the idea that some AC games are just absolute shit, garbage, trash, terrible ass games, and others are absolute perfection that can't ever be replicated. The reality is we spend so much time talking about the differences that 
We often forget how similar these all are to each other. And most of the differences come down to preferences. Which era do you prefer? What tone are you looking for? What fantasy is the most interesting to you? And on and on. I'm not saying that we can't look at games objectively to compare. That's silly. Of course we can. I am saying, though, that one man's trash can be another man's treasure. I don't think that Syndicate is trash. I also don't think it's treasure, but I like it. So let's just all calm down for two seconds and enjoy video games and let other people enjoy video games that we don't enjoy as much, okay? Good talk. Whew, okay, I'm gonna go take five deep breaths too. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. It's been so fun making this series and I'm really happy to see that you guys have enjoyed it as much as you have. So. The last mainline game I haven't played, as I just said, is Rogue. So I'm going to play that soon and get to work on the next 2021 video. It's probably going to be at least a month away. However, I still haven't made reviews for Assassin's Creed 1, Assassin's Creed 2, Brotherhood, or Revelations. So yeah, I will make those. Expect them in the future. I'll probably throw up some polls on the YouTube community or Twitter. Uh, so yeah, those will come out sometime in the future, but these take me a while. I don't want to just play Assassin's Creed games over, or, you know, back to back to back. So I really appreciate your guys' patience. Those will come. Also, after the Rogue review, since I will have played all of the main games in the series, I want to do like a tier rank video. I want to rank these games and yeah, tell you guys what I think where each of them stands compared to each other. So expect that definitely by the end of the year. That is it for me. If you like this video and maybe you haven't seen the rest of my reviews, check them out. I did AC in 2021 reviews for Black Flag, Origins, kind of for Odyssey. I did one for Unity and kind of one for Valhalla. So there's plenty of content already on the channel. If you're looking forward to the Rogue review, you can also subscribe to my channel so you don't miss that. And then while you do that, hit the bell too so YouTube lets you know when that is uploaded. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll talk to you next time.